the crew worldwide From Kali to Twitter Real hardcore fans Boxing ass niggas Consistency cops Police the views We'll pull up receipts for any debates you choose Shout outs to Clan Arky for the dope production Ring gang stay with the best discussions yes. Ring gang Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, it's shit's real. We talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, as always, Pascal Brother, New England representative. And as always, I got my man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey, man. What it do, man? Shout out to God, the GOAT artist, a lot of Del Boss, Soul War creator, own gang, innovator. Hi. Ah. Hi. Ah. Yes, sir. We in the house. As always, you know what I'm saying? So LB, man, you know, a couple things, you know, about three things we got to talk about. But first, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, what is good in boxing today. And what is good in boxing today is a card that entertains from beginning to end, which is a rarity in 2019. Imagine that, you know, boxing. Yeah, boxing, on, you know, we have boxing on every four, uh, very platform, you know, ESPN, ESPN Plus. Uh, PBC on FS1 and Fox, you know, and, and on Showcase. Showcase. <laughs> Each Showcase. one you name, and I'm like, Showcase? <laughs> exactly. You know, we have, you know, everyone has their rub, but, you know, it's hard in 2019 to find a card that's just like, you know, that's on point from beginning to end. Well, this weekend, finally, we, you know, we had two cards. Uh, one, uh, and both of them were on DAZN, the upstart uh, streaming service um, that is home to Golden Boy, Matchroom Boxing, and uh, some other fighters. So the card I'm talking about, uh, which happened on Friday, the main event was Susuket Sor Rungvisai, aka King Sor, the Rat King, you know, facing uh, one Francisco Estrada. That was a rematch of their fight of the year back on HBO uh, during one of the Superflies. But even before that, you know, just to, you know, briefly touch upon the fights that were not on the main card. I mean, you had a brutal knockout in one of them. You had Emmanuel Taylor nearly causing an upset on a prospect. And the fight, he probably should have won, really. Or at, the, at worst, a draw. You know, because, uh, yeah, there was no way in hell was it Jasov? I know. If you think that, then he probably should have won because I'm tired of the, these draws being the scapegoat for niggas getting out boxed. When, when in doubt, score the draw. Like, nah, nigga. The thing <laughs> was, the fight, the fight wasn't a draw. I thought, I mean, at, at worst it would be, I thought Taylor won that no, shit. No, no, I, I feel you. I, I feel you. I'm just saying in general, like, <laughs> if you're saying that, then, then, then probably Taylor did probably deserve to win. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, and of course, you know, being discussed with that. But then the most interesting one was, you know, high, high, pro, you know, big time prospect Anthony Sims Jr., who I've been pretty high on. And he basically got a stiff test, you know, in the in the form of um, Vaughn Alexander, who's the older brother of Devin Alexander. Uh, tough guy, both of them, you know, especially Vaughn Alexander. I mean, my man did a couple a decade or so in the in the joint and came out yeah, 11 years like yeah. robbery yeah man he came back you know right the wrongs you know trying to be you know try to be all he can be and he gave sim some problems now sim originally for i was like you know sims is a throwback i mean I, I, like when, when he said that he don't, he doesn't watch any of this bullshit, that's that's that, that's 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 permeating boxing today and he watches like 70s 80s fights i'm like this young man got it he gets it he understands what you just need to box going. like him now. <laughs> exactly. And you know, and the funny thing, do box is smooth. And you know, let's say, I mean, he was fed, obviously, you know, if you, since I've you know still watching him, he's been fed his his you know jobbers or whatever. And right. while Vaughn, to build him up. Yeah, while Vaughn Alexander is not necessarily a jobber. I mean, you want to call him a jobber yeah. to the stars, you know, so be it. But um. But no, he just, but it, it, he made shit a tough for Anthony Sims. Um, and uh, in the last, it went the distance, which is a rare Sims fight that goes the distance. I think it's only a second time that actually went the distance. 
And it was a pretty good prospect fight. I mean, that's the type, and that's the type of prospect I want to see. A prospect gets tested by, uh, you know, not like a journeyman, but a real solid jobber to the stars type of fight. That, that you have to take serious. Right, you have to take serious. The gatekeeper. And if Sims, and Sims, kept, and Sims took him serious. I just feel like he could have been a little more authoritative in the ring. Right, yeah, he was throwing a lot of like pity pad shots. Like, he, I think he was scared to really, because you know, Vaughn Alexander has a chin out of this world. And then he kind of moved around a little too much. Like, it was too many dead, dead gaps for him, right. for him offensively. But he still won. I just feel like it wasn't any, it wasn't no great was performance like, like that. Yeah, no, yeah, it wasn't, like, it wasn't like a highlight reel type of knockout, you know what I'm saying? Um, Not even that, I mean, because look, we don't, you know, you can have a good, solid performance without having a highlight reel knockout. And I just feel right, like his performance was maybe closer to uh, Shakur Stevenson's performance the other day on that right. uh, top rank card. Like, I, that's the type of performance it was, but... Even then, I felt like Shakur kind of moved his hands more. It just he kind of ended the fight on a on a little on a dud where uh, Sims kind of gave you flashes of the duds through the whole fight, mm-hmm. but he still boxed and, and showed you he's the better fighter. So you know, I'm not trying to be too hard on dude, but right, you know, yeah. it was a learning experience. Yeah, it was, a, and it was. I mean, it was, and he needed it, you know. Because, like I said, all, all yeah. young fighters need need a, need a, a gut check of some sort of that nature, and he got one without getting too damaged. So, you know, like I said, it was a good fight. And then, yeah, and he didn't knock his career down any bit. It's not like he barely survived or anything. Oh, no. You could just say he had a, a a tough little fight in his development. And I'm, I'm cool with that. You're not gonna look. You know, blazing. You know, John Blaze every time. You know, yeah. Of course. Even then, you know, against the tough guys, you still got to let the hands go and be authoritative with what you're doing. So, you know, but you know, he got a lot going on. You know, he he got a lot of potential. So we'll see. Right. So I mean, that starts the, and then after that, what start of the main card of three fights? The first fight was Jesse Vargas coming off his two draws in a row versus Humberto Soto. Um, this fight was slightly surprising in a way. I know LB was mentioned to you during the fight that Soto was actually putting hands on Vargas repeatedly. Off- <laughs> like he was like he was seriously like you know seriously giving Vargas some serious well, some fades up in there like like yeah, Vargas looking discouraged. Like you see at the end of the first round, like Vargas walked to his corner, like, God damn, like he's not following the plan. He's making me look bad. Like right. it's supposed to be a showcase fight. Like this nigga, he already bruised up his face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean it was like he was bleeding. I was just like from I think it was the headbutt. And I was just like, damn, like Vargas, like I mean, uh, and I remember I said same too, but it's like this is not a fight that you have. You have to win this fight definitively. You cannot struggle with Humberto Soto, you know. And the, the fight was <laughs> the fight was competitive until then. You know, until I think it was in the sixth round, Vargas landed a shot of right hand, and you know that stuff Soto on his track, and another another one put him on the canvas for only the second time in his career. Imagine that, you know, Vargas of all people, you know. Knocking down someone who was who's only been down for the second time in his actual career. Bar- Vargas was swinging for his career, though, bro. Like, yeah, he that's was. That's the hardest I've seen Vargas try to hurt somebody since maybe the Sada Mali fight. Right. <laughs> like, like think about it. Like he he wasn't throwing that Boner Broner and uh the Delor- the like that. He was throwing and he was connecting, but with Soto, it's like. <laughs> I yeah. think he was a bit pissed, like, because he was looking discouraged. Yeah, and it was like he was in the corner. I mean, Soto was just taking punishment. And I'm thinking to myself, man, this is he's throwing with some real bad intentions. And the referee, like, and the referee stepped in. And it was like, okay, okay, Vargas, like, you you did what you had to do. You knocked him down. You made your point. <laughs> you know, but then, like I said, it's just now. Obviously, we we'll have to really wait until Vargas's next fight to see where he really is at. 
because like I said, you can't be, although yes, he scored a definitive win, you know, just the fact that he struggled with Soto for that very, for, that for very long is a little eye-opening and alarming. Yeah, he got hit too much. I, I'm sorry, the fight was too competitive for, for that level. And, you know it was not, and, it was at, and it was at 154 too. It wasn't even like in their actual prime divisions. So at 154. Yeah. Hey, come on, man. Like, but yeah. shit, I, I, I ain't complaining. It was, it was entertaining as fuck. So yeah, hey. very much so. And, and we appreciate it. I mean, if you guys set some shit off, yeah. you have set it up with you know two Mexicans doing their thing in the ring. The next fight, however, was special. It, it was special on paper as it's a rare, it was a rare unification at Super Bantamweight. I think there's only Ooh. like six unifications at this weight in its history. <laughs> well, since it got split up or whatever. Um, and then it was between WBA Super Bantamweight champion Daniel Roman and IBS Super Bantamweight champion TJ Doheny. What? A fucking fight that was. Yeah, third. yeah, yeah I mean, fucking third. Great I mean, fight. Fight had, of the year right now. Fight of, fight, fight of the year, really. Yeah, I, I, and I, I, like I said, I mean, it surpassed Peterson and Lippens, which was turned out to be a great fight in its own. And that one was just that one was also a definitive one, but this one just had too, this one was just had too many ebb and flows, and on top of that, it just had a little bit more importance. Than your random welterweight. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yipping this Peterson was more like a crossroad. Like, hey, who's gonna be, you know, a top ten contender to face these elite guys if they don't fight each other? That's that's what was written all over that fight. Right. This fight was different. This was on some, hey, who's going to the next stage of their career? Right. Who's gonna be the one that's gonna eventually try to be the top super bantam in the division? Yeah. Who trying to get a money fight later on? <laughs> right, exactly. The fight had some ebbs and flows, man. Like second round, bro, Roman scores a knockdown and then Dougie battles back. And the seventh round, I believe, has Roman in all sorts of trouble. I mean, nope. he counted that dude for like two something minutes, man. It was just like, like, like it, it was fans galore, man, in that round. But Roman weathered the storm. Doheny um, tired up. He gassed out. Yep. I think it was either in the next round or the ninth round. Uh, he get, he goes down, and you know, Doheny is all messed up in the game. I think it was a body shot that put him down, and then you can see him spitting up blood too, and everything. Like he's his face is his eyes all swollen and he's lumped up. But he, he got it. Yeah. But he got up. He got right back up and start in in battle. And was able to, and was been they battled both to the belt, and I was just like, man, I, I I didn't stand up and actually clap for what I saw. I was like, that is what I'm talking about. That is exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. And yeah. Ramon ended up winning the decision, and now he unifies. He's he's a unified WBA and IBF super bantamweight champion. Like I said, I mean that fight, you know, warmed my old grizzled boxing veteran. Heart, <laughs> you know. Like, hey Amen. Everything you want in a fight, man. Everything you want, in, and there was no bullshit fuckery with the ref or judges. It just straight up old fashioned fade, blood and guts. You know, two warriors laying everything on the line. You know, repping their countries, all that shit. Just... Yep, and then also good sportsmanship at the end too, which is always good. Yeah. Because boxing, boxing is a sport for gentlemen too. The game we can never forget that. Yeah. You know, so. You know, but um, but yeah. Though, if you haven't seen that fight, full recommendation to watch. You know, Definitely. like yeah, because that is the fight of the year so far. You know? Great action, lots of different punches. Uh, he was landing that uh that that straight cross. Mm-hmm. Roman couldn't seem like uh he could get out of it. Roman, he, he seemed like he couldn't even get out of the way of that shit, and he still battled it, battled on, and, and, and did his thing. Great, just a great fight, man. It, it ain't too much analyzing that I like to do on great fucking fights. Mm-hmm. I think you just gotta uh, you gotta appreciate what they are, what they are for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no fuckery. The, the right guy won. It was a great fight. 
So if they did a rematch, I'm not complaining. Um, I'm really, yeah, I can't really say that <laughs> about this fight. Just y'all niggas just watch it. That's all. <laughs> exactly. And then it comes to our main event, which was as mentioned before, was a rematch between Sora Rungusai and Estrada. Uh, it was a good fight. It wasn't fight of the year like the first one, but it was a good fight. Uh, unfortunately, Sora Rungusai came in there with a strategy. I to this day I still understand why he did it because Sora Rungusai is a southpaw. And the South Parsons was the one that was giving Estrada trouble in the first fight. But in this fight, he decides to go fight Righty for nine rounds. And, he... <laughs> and in doing so, Estrada was able to adjust quick and lit him up over and over and over again with you know with combinations. Like, I mean, there were fluid combinations like that, and they were letting flush. And, you know, Sora Rungusai, of course, has a head of stone. So and he took them shits, you know, and... He was being rocked by some of them, though. Like, it, I, I feel like the dynamic of the fight changed from the first one. The first fight, I feel like Estrada had to adjust to uh, Rung Visai. Mm -hmm. I feel like the second fight... Rung Visai had to adjust to Estrada because Estrada was rolling on all cylinders from the get-go. He was countering that man with combinations from the opening bell. Like, yeah. he, he never allowed... I think he kind of spooked uh, uh, Rung Visai and made him switch fucking conventional. And, and, stay, and, and stay on that shit. And it wasn't until probably like the ninth round and he decided to go back to South Park. And that's when he probably won some of the rounds. Like, you could, you could argue that he probably won the last two or three rounds of the fight once he went back to fighting South Pole. Um, because it could be, I think, around that time, Estrada was losing a little steam as well. But it was just like, it took him too long to make an adjustment of that nature. And I wouldn't say this, only one of the scores rec uh, reflected it, because I, I, had, I had it 16-12 Estrada. But there were two scores of 15, 115 and 113, which pretty much means any of this, if there was a swing, if there was a swing round in there, Stor could have easily retained his belt by a majority draw. Which if that's my problem. But I, I'm I'm sick of these fucking judges like just giving one fighter the benefit of the doubt all the time. Like Rung V side and had the benefit of the doubt from the damn first Chocolatito fight. Like, I don't know what what designates a boxer to be the guy that we just give the benefit of the doubt to. Like, with Canelo, is fucked up, but I could understand. But with Rung Visa, I'm just like, why they lean so much to, to, to give him rounds? Because there's no way you could tell me he won five rounds in the second fight. The first fight, I thought, was super close. And I thought Estrada Nick did, like, barely type shit. I felt it could have been a draw, but uh, uh, he, he lost. Okay, cool. The second fight? Nah. Estrada won like eight or nine rounds clean. Mm. Yeah. Fucking man. The second five? Like, come on. <laughs> like, y'all need to stick it. This dude get the benefit of the doubt all these fights. Oh my goodness. Like, they really want him to be, be the dude. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, I mean, this is the man that beat Taco Tito in a war and then emphatically in the, in the rematch you know this is a i mean he's a he's a draw and he you know he's a popular guy and he has a popular fighting style so, that's the thing so but if you uh, score the fight if you score the first fight right the first time you don't even you might not even get a rematch chocolate tito probably doesn't even fucking mentally fall off like the way he did and, and just give up like he did the second fight. Nah, saw... I, I, no, no, no. That fight I was not no mental. I mean, that fight was Chaco Tito took... Uh, that fight was the breaking point for Chaco Tito. No, like... no, the first fight, the first fight, Chocolate Tito got broken, I think, not broke. He didn't get broken, he didn't get broken at all in the first fight. I thought I he feel did. Because like... I remember... He coming... pushed his limits to the point where I think that was it. Like he gave, he gave it his all, and that was it. Because if, if we being honest, I feel like the uh, the Kudras fight took him to the brink, 
Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. The hardest fight was the beginning because I mean, because that fight was. Like, I think it took. I mean, I think it took a toll on both of them because Quadras has not yeah. looked anywhere near like, in, in the sharp since that nope. fight. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he looks actually probably worse than Chocolatito right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, cause that, but, and the thing is too, Chocolate Chocolatito got a higher level he fallen from too. Right, too, because I think because A Quadras was, you know, that's his division, and Chocolatito is like, you know, sometimes those three pounds they mean something because you just don't know how much yeah. weight these lighter cats, lighter weight cats cut. And Chocolatito was or is is was a small guy, and you know when you that's get, what I think him losing the first fight, I think that's what truly broke that man spirit as far as mentally because it's not like he he pushed it to the st- extreme and he won he got over that hump and he had his last final bestest performance ever it's kind of like giving a man's been giving a toro Gotti the first fight in the trilogy with mickey ward mm. do we even get this do we even get a, a good trilogy after that you yeah, mean you might get a rematch, but that's pretty much I think that'll pass on this yeah. Exactly. You give Chocolate Tito the first fight like he was supposed to, you get a rematch and Chocolate Tito doesn't feel he doesn't have that vibe where he just gave up because of the second fight. I saw a dude who just mailed it in with just he didn't have no snap, no, no, no pep or anything. Like it's just And also, uh, and also in too. There. But also in that fight, I saw Roman side also look noticeably different because you know when he the first fight, you can tell I me mean, you can tell that he I mean he was in shape, but he was like starving in a way, like he was hungry. He was hungry. yeah, he was hungry. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but and that one he filled out more paws. Like he looked a lot big. He looked a lot bigger. Like you know his calves were big. Like you could he looked like a big fighter. Thing. That's what I'm saying. He got a chance to re he got a, a chance to replay his fucking movie. Same look. Same thing with James Tony and Sam Sam Peter. Mm-hmm. James Tony got robbed the first fight. He won that fight eight rounds to four, seven rounds to five tops at, at the most. Mm-hmm. You give it, you you give him the first fight. You don't even need a fucking rematch. You don't get it, but but you give Peter the first fight. What happens? Peter levels up and has the best boxing performance of his fucking career, and yeah. beats Tony in the second fight and drops him. Yeah, I think with a counter as well, right? Like a left yeah. hook. Yeah, and like I mean, that was I, I never seen Tony dominate like that in a while. And Peter, exactly. This is after he 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 outboxed the fuck out of him in the first fight. Mm-hmm. So I'm just I just hate how how these judges and, and we just you you know you throw off a whole you throw off somebody's whole trajectory of their career with these bad decisions, man. Like. But but I, I'm just I'm just keeping it real. Um, but at least with this time, the the right guy still won with Estrada. So we I feel like we could really get a real trilogy. Right, and I'll welcome that shit too. I'm pretty sure the zone. Hell will- yeah. Oh, a real trilogy. Look look at look at Barrera and uh, uh, Morales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had a trilogy, and both guys won fights won fights in that shit that. The other should have won, but the thing is, they won the fight. They gotta fight. They gotta. They gotta win on their fucking record. Right. Now n- niggas is talking about a, a, a triple G Canelo fucking uh, a trilogy, and all we got is we got two robberies going into a trilogy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> niggas is really selling that. Like, come on. Like, like yo, y'all niggas ain't even making making boxing trilogies the right way. Y'all think it's just giving one person a fight to make a, a to make a part two. Mm-hmm. At least with at least with these super fly niggas, these these little dudes, you know, all the heart in the world, at least they got it right and you know we could look forward to a, a real fucking trilogy and not this damn well, okay, we're just gonna get the guy who got robbed the second chance and the first guy who won, you know, <laughs> a chance to do even better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because that's all this that's all it is with these fucking these damn rematches lately. Hopefully we get it right with the fucking Charlo Harrison coming up. Mm-hmm. That's another one. The yeah. fucking Charlo won that fucking fight, but everybody is on some well Charlo didn't really look good. And the niggas is scoring fights on you not looking good as opposed to being effective. Mm-hmm. Same reason why you fucking uh, Pacquiao got robbed in the fucking first Bradley fight. Pacquiao didn't look it. 
good as he used to, but he still won, nigga. What the fuck? Yeah, like but, but I, I digress. I digress. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just it's just like a it's a, it's a pattern in boxing, and it's a pattern that you know it sort of reared its ugly head around this particular fight, um, in a way. Uh, so, like I said, uh, you know, w- but we definitely would welcome the trilogy for this damn fight, uh, for sure. Because like, at least both of them got, at least both of them got a, got real wins over each other. Mm-hmm. So, so boxing needs more trilogies like that, not ma- not manufactured, orchestrated trilogies and rematches. That's facts. It's pure facts, and that's also real talk. 